brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. Brett is in Providence, Rhode Island. Hi, Brett. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Hi. How can we help? Um, so I we are moving, um, and we're selling the house, and we're making a profit on it. And um, recently, I have been seeing your show on, like, uh, little clips. And I've been changing my mindset of maybe, you know, having lease vehicles isn't the best and smartest uh, decision I've ever made. And uh, also, though, there's we have a plan to use a good portion of the money uh, from selling the house to use that as a down payment uh, after a year of us renting because we don't know the area. We're mm-hmm. moving down to Orlando. Cool. So we're trying to get a, you know, it didn't feel right sight unseen just to purchase a house type okay. thing. Mm-hmm. So we're like, we'll rent there, Smart. get a feel for the area, you know, know where where we want to be school wise. That sounds wise. Kids. Um so how so, much is how much are you gonna get out of the house? What's gonna be the cash in your hand? I'm guessing anywhere between fifty and sixty thousand. Okay. And what's it take to pay off your cars? Um to pay off we want to be able to pay off both of them. If uh, so, I have two you. Years you, have, you owe more than sixty thousand dollars on your cars. Uh, well, they're leases, so I know, but they have, they have a payoff. Buy them. They have an early buyout provision. Right. If you call and ask for the early buyout, have you done that yet? Uh, yeah. So I know the early buyout for my truck is forty nine, and uh, the other vehicle is probably around, I would guess, around like forty. Or so. Wow. You're deep in some cars, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, what know, is the, uh, I, what's I your household income? Very, but, um, I do 180 a year. Okay. All right. Well, a good rule of thumb, if you want to build wealth, is to not have more than half your annual income tied up in things with motors and wheels. You are right on that bubble. Okay. Yeah. Um, you're not over it. But you got a lot of car debt, um, and you ain't got much home equity, which is kind of weird with that income. How long have you been making that kind of money? Um, I've been making. I uh, I made one sixty last year. Yeah. Um, so you know, a little bit of bump. Um, I've only been making this money since like about I would say twenty twenty one. Okay, um, just a few years. That makes sense bought, then. Okay. And yeah. how old are you? I mean, we bought this house. I'm 35. Okay. I bought this house with a VA loan, mm-hmm. so we did no money down. Yeah, down I can tell. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I uh, uh, purchased the house, and in two years, somehow we're selling it um, for a profit, which is just craziness. But yeah. Brett, that's I what love it is. I love vehicles. I'm a car nut. Um, mathematically, uh, as a financial person, I hate them. Because they're the largest thing that we all buy that goes down in value, and they go down in value rapidly. And so you've got a lot of money tied up in um, things that go down in value. Uh, And and so here's what I would do if I woke up in your shoes. Um, I would sell some of these vehicles, if not both one of them, if not both of them, and move down in vehicle to have less money tied up in things going the wrong way so that I can put more money into something that's going up in value, which is the purchase of your home. Uh, so I, I would pay off one and sell one and get you an inexpensive car to drive and pile up cash during this year for your down payment. Uh, if I, if I were in your shoes, uh, if Do you have you, any money saved, Brett, um, no, um, because obviously with moving and expenses, um, our savings has been bur- burned right. paying for, you know, transportation of one of the vehicles because yeah. we're driving, but we can't drive both vehicles and, you know, paying for a pod to transport. Uh, yeah, but all of that, but still, you're making almost $200,000 yeah. a year and you had no money. You just had 10, 15,000 bucks to make the move was all and you burned it. So you've got yeah. to get some money back in your hands because you put it all into vehicles. And so... Uh, I want you to make one hundred and seventy-five, two hundred thousand dollars a year, and have some money, uh, not be broke, and, and that's what I. If I were, if that's what I would like for you, you know, I love you. I want you to win, 
And that's what I want for you. So if I were in your shoes, as much as I love a nice truck, and I've got a, I've got a Ford Raptor that is an absolute beast. It's an amazing vehicle. I love cars. Um, and, and so, but, but I'm not going to love them so much that they eat me alive and they, yours are eating you up, man. It, yeah. Cause it's the, the, 90 grand and yeah, you got $90,000 tied up and your house had nothing down and you barely had enough cash to move. And the, the, this, and you make a lot of money. So I want you to make a lot of money and have some and, and not be feeding these beasts. So, um, I'm probably selling the expensive one, paying off the inexpensive one, getting a a, a very inexpensive cash car down in Orlando. And, and so in Orlando, so you don't have to even transport them. Yeah, probably too late. They're probably already moved. But the uh, but either way, and just be be free of all this. It's because if you're sitting there with no car payments and you're renting, you can stack some serious cash for your yep. down payment now. Yep. And um, and then and just don't be draw a line in the sand. It says I pay cash for things from now on. Yeah. And don't be afraid to rent for two years if you guys have to, to because you felt the pain of putting nothing down and not having a lot of equity. So even if you guys kind of slow pace it into that move, that's okay too. But if you got no payments in the world and you make 200, stack a hundred. I mean, live on, I mean, oh darn, I have to live on a hundred thousand in Orlando. I don't know if I can do that or not. Of course you can. People do it every day. So, I mean, yeah, stack a hundred in a year, you know, uh, and, and, that's a pretty strong downstroke for a house. Mm-hmm. That'll put you in a good place. Or wait two years and stack 200 Yeah. That'd be pretty neat. This is the kind of thing you can do when you're not giving it all to the car company in the form of a fleece. So, Brett, you'd already come to these conclusions, but I probably took you uh, about four notches along the radical steps. Uh, the, you know, took you a little bit more radical than you wanted to go when you called in. Be careful what you wish for when you call the show, <laughs> boys and girls. But um, that's what I would do, man. Uh, just Because just, here's the thing. For a long time, I drove cars I really hated because they were crappy and they were hoopties. And I drove like no one else so that later I can drive anything I freaking want to. You live like no one else so that later you can live and give like no one else. And so you you pay a price to win. You sacrifice to get yourself in a position because making that kind of money, dude, in five or six years, you could be a millionaire if you watch what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So talk through, cause we, we always say, and it's been proven that leasing is the most expensive way to finance a vehicle. So talk through the lease aspect of it, just from like the, the, the number standpoint right. of basically renting before you have to buy it out. When you finance a vehicle, the federal truth in lending laws, the regulations require them to hand you a sheet that shows you what your APR is, the interest rate they're ripping you off with, okay? When you lease a vehicle, you don't own it. So you're not technically borrowing money under the law, so they do not have to disclose the interest that they are charging you. But there is an interest calculation because you can take the actual cost of the car versus the stream of payments called your lease payments versus the pro- the price at the closed end lease at the back end. These are three or four financial variables. I can put them in my financial calculator and back into what your interest rate is. It's called the capitalization rate because it's not technically interest. But as we've done that in this industry now, we found that the typical car lease in America is being capitalized at 14.2%. So you're borrowing money at subprime rates when you lease a car. But people, people that lease cars, and I'm not picking on Brett because he's come to the conclusion that this doesn't work. But, to, you know, to answer mm-hmm. your question yeah, further, yeah. this is no, not aimed it. at Brett. This is just talking about the subject, right? Brett, thank you for calling. We appreciate you. When you lease a car, you're not asking what the interest rate is. You're the people that ask how much down and how much a month. What's the least amount per month and the least amount down, and I can drive this car? Rich people ask how much. Poor people and broke people ask how much down and how much a month. And that's what drives you into the lease. The lease is the most expensive thing on the car lot. That's why the car companies push them so hard, because they make more money on those than they do on the stinking car.